because it gets mixed around a bit. Uh, get the, the the model assembled, cleaned, but um, but done separately. Like you don't you don't want to be painting like behind this cloak while she's like there. Obviously, yeah, a much closer angle to the model. So um, yeah, it just made my life a bit easier. Same with the wings. Um, wings just gonna leave to the last. It'd be nice and simple to do. I think I'm just. Uh, Level washing, so everything's been just um, primed in, just like Vallejo uh, surface primer, uh, and then uh, we've done like a bit of a, a zenithal uh, on it. So, just gonna check can people hear me all right? This will be uh, embarrassing if somewhere along the lines where I've updated last, I've changed the, uh, the mic, it should be picking up. Uh, I'm gonna quickly check on my phone and uh. Take the headphones off for a minute. And, uh, I'm hoping that I'm hearing myself. If not, we'll do a quick fix. Um, and we'll get back to it. But yeah, uh, so the idea of this tonight is just to, to get a big majority. There you go, sorry. Yeah, a big majority of this uh, this lovely, lovely angel painted. So yes, yeah, working fine. So we're gonna do um, like a lot of a lot of basics gonna be done with airbrushing. Uh, we can do it in parts, so like I said these wings just check them. Wings will come last uh, for now. We're going to start off with the, the main body and then We'll swap across when we when we get bored with things need to, to dry and um, add Some uh, some paint to the, the back so uh, we're just using uh, I'm using a Sotar, uh, so a badge of Sotar 2020. Um, it's like my go-to airbrush. Like it, it is like a fine airbrush, but also it's like lovely to use. I say lovely to use, it's been fighting me. It's fighting me a bit recently. Uh, it is wanting, wanting a bit of love. It wants a service. So I bought it. I was trying to work it out. I must have, must have, must have had it for like four years now, maybe. Um, so it's had like a good, good amount of stuff through it. And uh, I do take care. I do like uh, clean it out. And, but you, you can only do so much without really getting into nitty gritty. So if you ever get an airbrush, that's the, that's the trick of not giving up airbrushing or not getting frustrated. Is clean it. Feed it like regularly. So I'm just gonna fiddle with the uh, the brush. But yeah, we're starting with Vallejo Metal Color. So it's spelled uh, the American way: C O L L R Metal Color, which is like this, like just beautiful, like gold. Um, like it's definitely. I've run out of gloves as well. So by the end of this, I might be uh, looking uh, a little bit uh, colorful on my hands. Uh, so yes, yes. So let me do. We've got the, the cloak and the the tree stuff separate. Got the wings separate. So and then just just put all the base together. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much tonight about the uh, like the, the cinematic stuff, the scenario elements. But, like it's nice that she's got like that as a model. I find that pretty cool. And we'll see uh, see how she starts to look. It's probably a bit closer than this probably. So that people have a, a bit of a better look as the gold goes on. So, uh, that's probably that's all right. Uh, yeah, so uh, we'll start with, like I said, the uh, metal colour. So, just going to do all of these uh, these gold areas. So, from the feet upwards, um, doesn't have to be super precise. Uh, see, a lot of this is going to it's just like the base layer, and it'll be worked up from there. It's nice and thin because it's the airbrush paint. Uh, if you don't have an airbrush, don't worry about it. Like loads of them for layer stuff is marketed as airbrush paints, but like 100%, you can just use it with a paintbrush. So I, I will be using like uh, the, the the range I'm using with a paintbrush like later on. Um, so yeah, don't worry, don't don't uh, think ah oh, crap. Can I use a uh, this is only going to help me if I've got an airbrush already. It's not the case. It's going to, it's going to help you. Anyway. So that's the plan. So don't don't worry about it. 
if you haven't had an airbrush, like they're super useful. Like to do so many different things. But like, um, you know, find find a mate at your club. Uh, find someone at your your club, your local gaming store, um, and say like, someone someone will have an airbrush. Um, but do you uh, a little little taste there, a little idea of how nice this gold goes on just with like this first uh, this first layer. So like I said, uh, not worrying too much about like, oversprays. Uh, just gonna get all these sections that are gonna be gold. Just done uh, the first the first coat of it. Uh, it's already uh, zenithal, so it makes it a little bit easier to like help pick out the the, the lighter points and the shadows. But that's just like again, if that's not something you've done before, look it up. It's like really easy. Like it's a super nice addition to your um, how to make your life easier as a painter. Um, being able to see just this is a going on nicely. <laughs> I say there's not much fight off my airbrush tonight because I've had to pull like the needle out a bit, so it's like it's always on, uh, which is not ideal, but. Um, I'm, I'm used to it enough that I've got control to to get it where I want at the moment. So see this this section here would be like absolute nightmare to impossible uh, with the robe in place. Um, obviously, some of these sections higher up will be severely a nightmare if you had the the wings in place. But like you see, like that gold going down already. Basically, just going to concentrate on these these armor segments first, and from there we'll uh, build up the color, and then move on to to the next stuff. So, all prepped already. This isn't my own in stars. So I was I, I bought the Dominion box. Um, there's a couple of models uh, I wanted uh, for painted, just for painting. This was going to be one of them. This and the Stormcast uh, banner bearer. I don't know the lingo. <laughs> you excuse that I don't know the lingo. Who uh, I think is super cool. Um, this guy. This banner. Obviously, again, in some assembly zone. So make my life easier, especially because this head uh, of the body is like pressed against the banner almost. Um, so yeah, I wanted, wanted these two to paint, like really to paint. I think they're like absolutely beautiful models. Um, and the the cruel boy shaman. Uh, I wanted. Uh, oh, thanks, Peter, for the the like, buddy. How are you tonight? Um, yeah, and the, the cruel boy shaman. I wanted uh, to make into a necromancer because, like, he's, he's he's got the look. He's got the look. I'm just getting back into Age of Sigmar. I'm starting with Soul Blight Graveyard Lords. Uh, so rather than getting a a crappy old uh, necromancer sculpt. I was like, well, I can just do a bit of work and get this guy. Um, and obviously, I want things like the, the book and um, so I've got that and like the, the general's handbook. So I'm I'm set to go. Apart from the fact I don't actually have any vampires or like, skeletons, or I'll get there. There's a, there's a big queue, and I've got a couple of big big bills this month. So. Uh, It'll, it'll come in time, but um, but uh, what I did get to do was uh, yeah, me and I, I got to sail, sail, <laughs> I got to sell a bunch of this stuff, um, just mainly like to, to mates and uh, people I know, uh, and not not worry about, just just try to like make some of my money back or most of my money back. I think I sell, sold like a bunch of the different spirits, I think I sold like four or five of the, the different things to one of the guys in my club for just like a five or a piece. So all, all added up, and it was okay. Um, but uh, yeah, one of uh, one of the club guys isn't super into painting, so I was like, uh, I I could paint your <laughs> your angel for you, uh, and he's he's alright with that. So, uh, so this is being painted for for Tom, one of the guys who I uh, uh, play with, and I'm in a, a, a spammy chat full of. <laughs> full of Age of Sigmar list building and advice. I don't know if it's something everyone everyone has right. I assume so. Might be wrong. 
why just like in this uh, world way in. So just doing these uh, these top sections, got the front of this armor all done, or rather all the, the base level done. Uh, this kind of like a uh, snake, um, oh, what's called it, like filigree stuff, not filigree, but um, the detail um, will end up being silver, so not worrying about catching it too much. Um, and then this kind of crown, most of it's going to be gold. Again, the bits that aren't, I'm not worried if I'm, uh, if I'm catching like, the wrong sections, uh, as it will be, will be done over anyway. It's not like it easy enough to do. But, like, if I just uh, stop for a second, and I like, look at how, this is just like the first coat, um, and it just comes on like super easy, super nice. There's a uh, not a lot not to like about the the Vallejo metal colour range. Um, like the Vallejo metals generally are nice. Um, but yeah, but boy, the metal colour stuff is just like liquid metal scorches stuff to use. Um, so it's going to do the pommel there, where it's going to be uh, this section on the cross guard this is obviously all like just gauntlet so to get done and the door goes so I'll quickly grab <laughs> grab something be back in a second food shopping, emergency food shopping that was meant to arrive about an hour ago has finally turned up but uh, yeah in the meantime back on the back on this beautiful angel so apparently her stats are really good I don't know I've not actually looked at any of the books yet I've looked I've been reading uh, the sort of like book uh, rather than uh, on this guy okay on uh, paint here we go so got paint coming out um, so we're just doing the, the cross guard here, uh, the gauntlet, that, that very base bit of the pommel, and then like the gold like travels quite far up the uh, up the blade. So all of this section here, like up to around here. Is all gold. So we'll put that on. Do the same on the other side. And then we'll get round through the rest of this armor at the back. It's nice and easy just to blast it on. There's obviously the the darker, the non-gold uh, sections of metallics to, I'd say to worry about, but you don't need to worry about it because it'll come, it'll all come later. So not to worry. Uh, so that's that section done. We need like a little bit more uh, on some of these areas. So just change where we're, where we're holding it to get like a better angle. And then we're gonna just do the, the attack sections or the gold rather, I should say, on the spear. Uh, so just whacking in this bottom section. And then the top section, I think, is... Oh, yeah, that bottom section is meant to be like like a steel as well. So maybe the... Oh, yeah, which is, which is fine. So that's a, an easily fixable mistake. But this, this, set, this top like uh, detail section here... Uh, is gold. So we put that in. Got 
lots of very uh, chilled, angelic music out of the uh, out of the randomizer today. It's kind of like apt, so we're not complaining. Uh, and then we're just going to do the back of her. Let's move this uh, cloth out of the way. Let's uh, move the back of her. Like, uh, essentially, like it's crying, right? So just put it's coming out a bit fast, but that's okay. Let's do the first blast over there. Not again, not gonna worry about the back of her head. Like her hair's gonna get painted uh, separately anyway, so it's nice and Thorough. Make sure we get the first, first over. So uh, we've got the first lot. Um, it's in it with with an airbrush. You have this is one of the, the, the beautiful things is we're going to do two coats of it. Like the first coat is already well and truly dried. So get this beautiful like uh, Griffin like knee guard. So you start to see. The, the gold really coming out now. So this is only like the second, as you see, like second coat. Do the other leg as well while we're here. See like the difference. It doesn't take doesn't take a lot out of this to to really make it look lovely. So if you're uh, if you're with me painting Stormcast this weekend, come and, uh, let me know what you're painting. Like I, I've, this, I've never painted a Stormcast model before. This is my first foray into. Sigmar's own uh, favorites, and they're super cool, right? It's been, well, certainly the new, the new little sculpts look so cool. That's just doing the uh, all this up section again. Uh, just uh, the th the hip plates, the thigh plates, and uh, all the way up through the, the breastplate. Getting this really lovely gold on. Make sure we're getting enough coverage on the the heraldics or crown. Like as as fancy models go, like there's so much cool deal on these guys, on these peeps, the, the stormcast. Like if I hadn't already been like stolen away by uh by vampiric knights and werewolves. I'd definitely be considering these just just from a painting perspective and like this this could look cool. The other army I was super tempted by I've been super tempted by Grotz for ages. I just love goblins, I think goblins are super cool. Um <laughs> you know, I love the film Legend. If uh look back to some of some of Tom Cruise's older stuff and Tim Curry. Um and then the other uh The other thing I really liked was uh, the idea of doing a um, silver neff, but as like a, a death. this has probably been done like a full on um, um, like what's the word the like a full on like haunted forest. So lots of like blues and purples and green glows doing the proper kind of spooky. Um, but yeah, so we go. So here we have the first the first bit of the armor. Uh, I'll show you just how. How nice it looks. There we go. So you see really it picking up the the light. So this is obviously true metallic. Like those people that do like non-metallic metals, it's something I need to try, put some time into. But um But yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with getting a result like this out of 
yeah, some, some very quick work really. So we're gonna just do that. So that's the, the first go, it's uh, the metal color gold. Let's uh, uh, bring it out a bit. And we're gonna add some lichen flesh gloss next. So I need to check that I'm not still spraying gold, which I am. Uh, so I'm just gonna blast away with the airbrush just a little bit more. Uh, so I'm just firing air. Um, I said like the, the paint is so thin that it dries so quickly that you like really like advance on to the next part of the model to paint like relatively quickly. Um, and obviously if you want to shoot a bit of air through to to hurry along a bit, you can do. So, uh, so pe people are watching. What are you? What are you playing? Or are you just are you painting just to paint, or are you painting to play? Like, I think I think I want to get like Radicar. Radicar might be might be one of my first uh, Soul Bright models to, to actually purchase from the line. But, uh, but yeah, we see this should be pretty much dry by now. So we're gonna add a, a white and uh, flesh and gloss. So we don't want to lose like the, the metallic element, which is the important bit. So we're just gonna put a bit of a gloss over it just to to darken the gold a bit. And then we'll highlight, we'll go, we'll go back to the gold and then we'll probably do like a very fine um, uh, <laughs> a very fine um, uh, chrome over the top because it's like a lot of like white, white gold um, on the model. Let's do uh, I'm like, did I even shake that? I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's shake it just to be safe. Um, so yeah, so we're going to do essentially all of these, the, the section I've just done gold, that's meant to be gold. Um, just, uh, just wash. So we'll pick a paintbrush here. So we're going to jump across to an actual paintbrush again. Uh, that's it, we're going to just, uh, start and don't want to let it pull too strongly. But we do want to just like uh, get into these recesses. Just to darken it to like a, like a ruddy, a ruddy color. There's lots of um, sections to work with here. So uh, if you're if you're worrying, obviously you get to do it too much. You can always pull it back off. It's nice and easy to do. Uh, we're going to do all these uh, score sections. I said make sure you don't get big pools developing. But do you want an effect? Do the Griffin's head. Uh, and like I said, yeah, this is just as you see, like darken it down, but it'll keep like that metallic sheen because it's a gloss. So you won't you won't lose you won't dull it down to a point where you may as well not have painted you may as well have painted it brown. Don't worry about that. It's not gonna not gonna be all lost. All of your work is not gonna be undone. Uh, this is the back section, so again. Don't worry too much about this. There's a lot of this will be a lot more obscured. Um, obviously, some of these sections are going to be things like leather or, um, or just completely behind the cloak. But we'll get this done nice quickly. I imagine this is a section they're going to have to actually let to dry a little bit. So we'll pick up. In a minute, with the the back section, uh, with the the cloak and the tree. Obviously, I'm going to focus on the cloak rather than uh, the tree. Like the tree can come later without too much hassle. I really do like appreciate the 
like how cool like the how how scenic the base is like how thematic it looks yeah it's very it's very cool i'm a, a fan definitely a fan um, so you see here on the center how we're looking some of these areas are very like purposefully getting those darker sections in here underneath the the chin so this will be another uh, like easy section to get the darker areas uh, but we've got all of it covered so slap it on just uh, just be aware to to go back over and uh, pick up any any big pools where it's uh, where it looks like it might be a little bit too much. Uh, once this is dried, we're going to go back over it with the same gold again, so the metallic colour gold. And then we'll do very fine highlight with, uh, again, uh, Vallejo's metal colour chrome. Top of the sphere here. Uh, like the gem's gonna be a different colour here, so that'll end up being painted white for just to to let the colour of the gem shine through a little bit more. Um, obviously the the gold setting for it is to uh, have a bit of uh, a bit of love. Uh, we've got this back section. You see, like if when you when you first put it on. Yeah, it's quite easy to, to get like a big group, a big pool of it, and you just can just push it around with the brush quickly and easy enough to, to not worry about it. So we're nearly, uh, nearly done. Do the uh, this section here on the sword. Okay, it's all going to get brightened up uh, afterwards, but we need to make sure that those those areas that would hold the shadows uh, are a little bit less shiny, a little bit less glint to them. So here we've got a little bit of. Uh, Build up, just so wipe it away. We've got his, his face looking uh, stern. I think that's everything we've got. So, we're not, not bothering with this, these top sections, they'll end up being um, like uh, steel through to silver, but uh, everything is going to be gold. We want to have this, uh, this effect on. So that's the uh, first lot there. I'm going to give this uh, just a minute to, to settle in. So that was uh, Reichland Flesh Shade, the gloss, the gloss version specifically. Uh, we go back to the airbrush. So just like a double shower. That we're just blasting out air again. Make my life a little bit easier. You see, like the difference here, that where we've brought it up and we kind of toned it down a little bit with this um, the shade. So we will leave him in place for a minute, or her rather in place. And start looking at the robe. So quickly again. If you are if using airbrushes, like metallics and one things, you, you need to definitely make sure you're, uh, you're clearing out. If you get a bit of a, a ball ache. So saying that, put some actual cleaner through.
So just hang there. A lovely job of clearing out the, uh, the drawers from the airbrush. Should take just a minute. I'm lucky that my hobby room's got a sink. So I have the tools on tap to just go, oh, I can just wash it out properly. Like, I hate to be stuck. With a bucket or something, be like, oh yeah, I've got like this little bucket underneath my desk. That would suck. So we've got there. Clean that out. Let's make sure that goes through. Clean that, fight the air rush a little bit. And uh, yeah, from here, so we've got the this first base coat. This the start here, so the the metal color, the Vallejo metal color gold, uh, through to the the flesh shade. Why my airbrush disagrees with me vehemently. We're gonna work on this uh, once it's dry in a second. Uh, we'll uh, apply like the first highlight to the gold armor. While we're waiting for it to dry, I will uh, hit my airbrush a lot. <laughs> yeah, the, the, when, when you've had an airbrush for long enough, you kind of get to a point where you're like, oh yeah, I do need to, to give it some extra love. I kind of, I need to send it off for uh, a service. I know it might be like uh, like two or three weeks that I'm sat without an airbrush then, which is a... Or I'm sat without a good airbrush. I've got like a, a standard one I just got with a kit. Um, which is fine to do some things. Like if I want to do like priming or anything large, it's not too bad. But if I'm, anything detail-wise, you get to a point and you're like, all oh, right, I'm just, just splatting paint everywhere by doing so. So this is definitely not not happy. So we might end up flipping over to the brush for a bit. Like there. As we've just done. But the main thing is uh, we've got this this first nice little gold layer all done. Oh. Had movement there. <laughs> Let's see. If you are an airbrush fan. If you use your airbrush often, look after it. <laughs> I do, I look after mine, but yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely reached that point where it needs a, a little bit more love. So, the airbrush can go away for a bit. I'll get some actual, uh, actual paintbrushes out. Which is what we do. So, uh, so here we are. We've got uh, the first I said we've got this first lovely uh, Vallejo metal color gold uh, on already. And I'm gonna start, whoosh. One of my uh, broken toe brushes looking very gnarly. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have a look. Should see the DL there. And then yeah, we're gonna, gonna start bringing up the uh, the gold, so uh, I'm gonna pick out a bit of uh, let's get my actual 
water. I'll drink from it. So we're going to do just a little splash of uh, gold. Like what's lovely about it is it's thin. You, know, this, you, you don't need to do a lot with this stuff. It's great. The, essentially the Vallejo uh, air range if you want to use it with a paintbrush. It's like, well, that's fine, but you don't, don't have to worry so much about getting... In fact, if I show you the uh, consistency, it's already there to obviously to be able to go through an airbrush optimally. It's already nice and thin, so makes makes your life easier. Uh, so we've got the uh, this first section done, and then yeah, like I said, we're gonna start now just highlighting up the uh, the, the raised areas. Uh, so back on this uh, this gold. So we'll start at the bottom again. Uh, we'll see you there. Top of these armor sections. Look where the boot is. It's a very thin line here. Not all the way to the edge because we don't want to uh, to undo the work we've done with the uh, the shade, but we definitely want to, to pull out to go onto these these high areas. And as I said, then some of the the last highlights we'll see on it will be uh, like a chrome to to make it almost like a, so let me look for that white gold. That we uh, we see on the box art. Just pick it up. So sections there. So we still see like the where the recesses are. Then we've left uh, a good bit of uh, of shade. And we'll pick out the. Sections on the raised sections on the eagle's face. Eagle Griffin. I guess it's Griffin, right? Griffin, Griffin is very like, iconic for the, the Stormcast. Or certainly by the, the looks of the looks of things. So I'll do the Griffin's brow on the side. Speak. Come here. How far out are we, though? We're quite far out. Let's go back in. Just picking out these little lines. Top. Top section of the armor. Okay, do the same. Here, where we've got the the light catching it, and uh, skip across to the other foot. So you can see here where we've got these. I suppose this back section here has got a little bit of light on there. Right here. Not too much, and a lot of this will be, as I said, obscured by the cloak anyway. So don't uh, don't kill yourself too much over it. Uh, but we go back onto the, the leg, we'll do the, the same for uh, so down. So obviously, you've got a bit more of a, a brighter area at the top. Just like a, a bigger area for the, the light to catch. So, we'll let that just naturally catch that on the top of the. Uh, top of the knee pad, knee plate, knee pad. You get it. Center part. Let's 
same on this bottom section. Not, do, not going too far. I want to make sure that we've still got like a nice, nice bit of the shade left. To, uh, Sections affect the, the foot plates again. Yeah, we're looking just, just at these a little bit of highlights, top sections, and then rotate round and just do a chap to a chaps ass area. So, put it on there. Uh, like obviously, for now, you can see where the light will be peeing off this. This calf section, uh, the bottom of this foot plate here. Um, a lot of it, though, as we know, is going to be hidden by robes and stuff, so don't worry. Um, but we can see, or you should be able to see the difference here where the bottom layer now we've got like this, this nice of uh, nice gleam to like the raised areas. But we've also got this, um, this contrast with the the shadowed areas where it's still a bit a bit dark from the the wash, which is exactly what we want. And um, we're looking at the same again here on the uh, it's like hip the sal salettes. Are they? It's been a while since I looked at like armor. Um, too much to yell. So do like a lot of LARP, which is basically reenactment for nerds who don't want to get hit if you can't <laughs> which is super cool I, I i really enjoyed it i did it for like a long time but uh yeah i i i, I quit being one of the one of the team to wear a lot of armor uh, some time ago uh, so it's doing this uh, side section Around. Get a bit more water just to get it ever so slightly. To the uh, the gold. We should be able to see where we've got this these deeper areas uh, that we're intentionally leaving on each side and the lighter areas that we're picking out. And then same here on the it's like kidney plates I guess, right? <laughs> this is this is like a the entomology the entomology the uh, the anatomy of armor. What where where would this plate be? Where would this plate be? So all these uh, these high areas here. Just get a little bit of uh, a touch of the the fresher gold and all across this breast piece. And I guess yeah, we've got this top section here. Head kind of looks in an odd position at the moment, but it's definitely definitely in the right spot. We'll, we'll end up being fine. Uh, but we will do. So I should have done earlier with the airbrush. Just do a little bit of a, a filler in there. And again, here the these kind of ornamental. Like comet trails. Uh, we're going to be picking up a bunch more, more light than uh, the areas underneath. Uh, this section obviously is, um, if you look at the art, it's like a gem um, around it. That's the we'll have a greater area of light. Uh, so we just follow the natural like flow of this uh, crown piece here. Just get this.
Okay, it's on first. section is going to be uh, kind of glowing from like the ruins in the in the middle section here so not going to worry too too much so you want to get like the right bit of gold on it do nice just nice lines across here the top sections Little bit on these, yeah, like around her head, especially on the, the top bit. And the pauldrons, before I do the rest of the pauldrons, we're gonna just flip around. I'm just gonna do the, the comet trails and the headpiece. You can see though, it's such a like such an easy uh, medium to work with. So this is, this is still like airbrush paints, but that's why airbrushes uh, hated me. I got through like nearly an entire model the other day without it uh, deciding it didn't want to work. My jobs. One of my main jobs this week, when I get a second, is yeah, to take it all apart clean it as best I can, give it another test run and if it's uh, still still playing up then it's gonna have to go off to be uh, serviced by someone more technical than me which is okay just, uh, just a little bit of a pain in the, the bum for timings of stuff so yeah we got the uh, that section there highlighted up I'm going to onto the uh, the right side of this pauldron. So we're doing all these high lines where the, the light's going to catch the, the forehead of Sigmar's face, nose. I'm guessing that's Sigmar, right? These. Uh, it's all Sigmar. Beard and. Follow the, the lines where you'll you'll naturally get that glow. This top section, and the same with the uh, the sword. Go get a bit more uh, water in there. Okay, so uh, we are. Watch this. This top section's here. Let's try that again. There you go. Focus camera. So, just the top of the, the cross guard. Top section here. Hilt for the cross guard. Spin around and do the same. This is on the elbow, the, the guard. And we're just flipping it over to the other shoulder piece here. Okay, right, we're just looking at these these raised areas where uh, it's naturally just going to be picking up a bit of extra light. So the hand. Let's 
top section here. around like that set that uh, fitting with the, the chemis and then the top sections of the armor again. Just these edges. Around for uh, back of the hand, sort of thumb, extended sort of finger there. There we go. So, got like a very nice gold. Like I think got the uh, the sections where you can see it's uh, a little bit darker. Um, but yeah, the the box art very much seems to be lighter still. So you want to add like a, a further highlight of that, um, which will be metal colour uh, chrome. Just like the very, very tops of these areas. Um, but for now, Ooh, there we go. Let's see uh, the progress is what we have so far. So, uh, we're going to pick up the, the next sections. So we're going to skip across to some of these, uh, like the steel, the, the darker metals, which is Vallejo steel. There you go. Uh, so another another one of the airbrush um, metal colours, which is uh, just. Gorgeous to use. So we'll just do just put a little bit of water in my uh, my palette as it is. This was uh, I was put onto this paint by um, one of the Norwegian um, uh, competitive war machine players, Syndra. It's just I was like a struggling. To get the the right gold, or maybe the right brass or something or copper. I can't remember. Um, for for an army I was painting for uh, for WCC, which is like the, the the world team championships for for War Machine. It's actually there's a an equivalent for, uh, for Games Workshop stuff as well. Get that water. Oh dear. Oh, we've mixed way too hard. Never mind. And he's like, he's like, yeah, check this, uh, check this out. And turns out it was like a, an instant, I'm sold. Um, it's a bit more expensive than like some of the other Vallejo range stuff, but it's in a bigger pot. Um, and it's an airbrush paint, so it's already mixed. And you don't have to worry about how much you're, uh, you're putting down. Just gonna just filling in this uh, section here where it's basically just uh, just picking up like the zenithal currently and then get the, uh, the gold overspray. So picking out this scale mill. Um, and in the um, in the box art, these these sections here kind of like nebulous to whether they're white. Or metal. I'm doing them. I'm doing them as metal. Makes sense to me. Rather than be like the only actual white section of the armor. So that's what we're doing. Just, uh, putting that first section down on here. I think as well. So you see, it's like a nice. Nice pattern of scale mail. 
just need to make sure I'm catching the stuff that I've already uh, slightly caught with gold. Make sure it's uh, picking it all up. Um, yeah, I think like as as a showpiece model, like she's she's pretty badass. Yeah, you've got you've got to give it to Game Workshop if you if you. If you're like uh, starting the new age thing, why you're like, whoa, what do I want? I want something a bit showy, a bit flashy. You know, put my uh, put my paintbrush to. There's definitely worse ways you can go than than the than the, uh, the stormcast. So I'm just gonna put my stuff around here. So we've got that bomb section, and then we've got a uh, again more scale mail like under the arms. Just packing like a lot of armor, which is nice to see. It's not like uh, none of this uh, bikini-clad red soldiers of the the older days. Like she, she's she's going into combat. And she like means business. And she is like I am wrapped up in this fine ass armor. I'm about to smite you. This is kind of cool. So just picking out these. So no, there's a sign. Let's go over there. And just checking the the art. Yeah, we've got like scale mail. Well, rather we have a scale on the side. We've just got like a. Uh, so it's just like a little plate. I'm not sure what the reason for that is. I think it might just be a part aesthetic. There's a certain like um like fantasy and sci-fi armor like uh, thing about non-uniformity. So like you'll often see in, in films and in pictures, like fantasy art and sci-fi art that uh, People favour having like a slightly different shoulder pad, for instance, on one side. Like this this non-uniformity sort of uh, just comes into it. Let's put a bit more uh, steel up here somewhere. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's just like a. An aesthetic thing like there's a lot of art theory where you have like uh uneven it's good like numbers wise so like if you had if you go like a a section of three it's better than having one big like a lump or blob i guess uh so we're just adding these uh Yeah, so we think of steel. We think it should be steel. So this yeah, it's gonna be Essentially, which makes uh, makes life a little easier for me. Um, so that's that. I think the other sections of her are just going to be like the, the the top top two crown parts, the comets, I guess, the comet blaze, and then um, parts of the the weapons. So we're just going to do the comet quickly. That's nowhere. Don't worry about this. Nice and smooth. I said this is this is like a, a darker metal, so this is steel to start off with and then we'll uh, we'll highlight up with uh, a bit of chrome afterwards. And then a little bit of a chrome mix with the gold. That's what I'm thinking currently to uh, to get this like a 
white gold effect for the uh, that very sort of top highlight. I think this section just is gold. I'm hoping. So just getting with the comet trails done. Get it all sorted. Lovely. Uh, yeah, we've got the. Uh, The majority of the metal is actually done. So like I said, we're going to do a little bit more of a, a highlight to it. But for now, let's crack on with the just the base colours on the the weapons. Uh, so we see it's from here up. Where the detail ends. And we've got this like um, runic sort of section here. So we'll end up having a clue too, so I'm not going to worry too much. So I think I'm saying that. Not, not, don't worry too much. Get that paint on. These things here. This is the this is the first level here. You have know, plenty of time to uh, to correct if you really feel you need to. This is just like such a nice, such a nice flow. Like that. So even though the, the airbrush is uh, let us down, we don't have to worry too much because we've got. It's just like the the paint itself is nice to work with, so you can be forgiven. Can be forgiven for for not wanting to play ball because it's just nice to paint on. There you go, see, it's just like glides on. This is like really thin, but like you see, like the the coverage for a metallic is just we're done. And then we had uh, sword was done. At the bottom of the spear, we'll see. I was like, I was like I'm, not, I'm sure there's another part that I wanted to do. It's the part that I'd already started to do gold waxing. That's uh, so just in this bottom part of the spear. Um, which kind of looks like it's a, a bit of a a two-way section. Looks like this could easily be uh, some crazy spinning. Uh, Speeding off attack. So, just nice quickly, just going over the uh, that gold base. It shouldn't take a lot to. Uh, Press on it. That's uh, that's first there. So here we go. All right. So we'll take a second. We've got the I think a couple of these lower scales might have a tad bit of gold on them still. So. bit of extra uh, attention. It's going to see how it is. Same with the uh, the bottom section of the comet. Just needs like a little bit of extra 
extra where it's taken the gold, the initial gold. So instead, in the other section. So yep. So yeah, here she is. And we've got her uh, top section. For some reason my camera's asked me to charge, so it's plugged in, so it shouldn't need to be charged. section where the where the detail starts basically on the like the gem housing so if I tilt a little bit you would see where I'm on about and then back down again all right well that's annoying so one second while we uh, fiddle with the camera. So the camera's decided, despite being plugged in, <laughs> it, uh, it needs a battery source or something. So I don't know if that means that something is loose. So, shuffle around all this stuff. Well, that might be an early night tonight. But what we do have, so I'll show you with the uh, flip to the the top camera. You can't see a lot with that. So let's uh, try and fix it. So I'm going to be right back uh, and we'll hopefully have the camera fixed in a second. So, fixed. Easy peasy, right? So, turns out you have to have the plug turned on at the wall. Hmm, who'd have thought? <laughs> but thankfully, it's an easy fix. So, so we're back, uh, and this is uh, this is our current progress. So, this is Ian Strada. Ian Strada. In Ian Strada. The Huntress. So. So we've got um, these these gold sections are mostly done. There's gonna be like a little bit more of a highlight to it. Um, the uh, the steel is what we're currently working on before the camera fails. So we're just gonna get back to that. It's not a lot to, to finish off, so we're just gonna quickly catch up with it. And once once the steel here is done, we're gonna. Perhaps look back at doing uh, that extra layer of, of highlight onto the gold just to try and get the the white gold effect. Um, like I've seen a lot of people are, uh, are happy to, to be painting and to be painting it with just golds, um, but I think like from where she is. Like, I think it's nice that like she's got like that 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 ever so slightly different tinge to the armor, like that have more regality. Am I making up words? A bit more of a regal look to her. The uh, where the armor's a little bit beyond uh, outside of the norm for uh, for this tall cast. She's not just a hero. She is like a chosen like 
individual. Okay, I'm assuming there's uh, some badass story for her. Oh, I think, in fact, I, I listened to some of it where it's like she's, she's losing more and more of her humanity or her what, what makes her not just a weapon uh, because she's been brought back and sent out hunting so many times which is kind of cool right the the story of how they basically are uh, you know they, they, they go to battle they fall they're picked back up and sent back out but each time they lose a little bit more of what makes them individual what makes them unique it's kind of cool So there's a lot to like about the in the story um, for these for these these chaps and chaps chapesses these peeps. So yeah, so we've got the uh, it's basically uh, I'm looking at the other arm. We're going. We've got this uh, this steel section on the on the shoulder piece. That's right, piece the uh, the elbow piece on her right arm. So we should look I'm replicating that. On her left arm as well. So this is just me using you know, my my common sense, I guess, like ad living where I think the paint should be. Um, it don't have to be exact. As long as you get the the effect you're looking for. Uh, I'm just gonna add a little bit to that. So, that's the steel. So we have the, the majority of the gold and the steel is done. And then we'll, uh, we'll add to this slightly. So uh, I want to do a, like a wash to wash the steel down so it's uh, dark. So I'll do like some null oil, but obviously not right now. I need to, to wait for it to, uh, to dry. Um, but let's look at a bit of let's look at a bit of chrome in the meantime. So we see um, another. We should get my palettes washed out so I can use some actual palettes. So we're going to do um, uh, like a bit more of a fine highlight onto the gold. So we're using metal color. Chrome, um, which is beautiful stuff. The whole the whole metal color range is great, um, and as we've already talked about, I'd use it with um, an airbrush, but. To, to play around with. Um, so that's what we're doing. Uh, it's got a little bit of that. I've got a little bit of gold. I'm going to do a bit of a mix. A bit of a mix to just to, to get the the colour I want here. So we're looking basically for a white gold rather than a, rather than a goldy gold. <laughs> Science. Science words, right? So mix this up. Okay, so it's right. So we have got a very light white gold. We just just makes that. And that's what we do. So we're uh, going back to the the gold section of the armor. We're doing these. Uh, just 
these these like uh, raised areas. They want that a little bit more of a highlight. So we'll catch top of this foot. So just there, just a little bit of a highlight. It's, not, it's quite hard to see how much. Basically, just going to blend in a little bit. The gold, <laughs> the gold on my palette is uh, slowly uh, advancing. We'll do up this. Uh, section here a little there I want to kind of just go into it Picking out these fine areas, these lights, so we look like the beak sections. Just a dab, dab, very thin line of it across like the, the brow. section here. So this is all the white gold mix just to get these top sections. Here onto the Section of brow, section of brow where it's like a little bit higher. So slightly. Okay, yeah, let's have a look. So we can see, hopefully. Some like uh, some distinction there where it's uh, the highest highlight. And some of it we're just like letting it wash in a little bit. And we do the same on the other leg. Pick out just lines where they're coming, just catch.
compressor just there. Uh, Go off. So we're done with the Everest for that. Uh, so yeah, we're basically just uh, just getting these fine little lines. Let's try that again with uh, <laughs> the camera on the mini. That will help. So doing. Thin. dramatic music uh, in the background. Seems very like appropriate like uh, Stormcast fight music. So get here just this in the top section where it's gonna be picking out the light. line on the top of the, the armor of the, the knee the rivets start to see the difference so it's a subtle one intentionally so but The pips where you say. I'm not even really sure I bothered or put that a little bit here. What kind of wet blend it allow in? Gold. So you see the. The difference across the bottom here. Hopefully, <laughs> it's not just my light that is uh, we're playing around with. We've got some good, good gradients here. Uh, and then we're going to go back onto well, this main section, right? So we're going to work up the body. Um, let's do the same. Except for this bottom section, these hip plates are going to be catching a little bit more of the light. Like if you look at the art, um, they're catching a bit more of the light on these. Let's see on to that bit more. The silver on the bottom section here. We've got that light. Onto the. Like, are these meant to be suns or they're just ornaments? It's quite, quite hard to tell. Um, Plates, as we've uh, as we've called them earlier. And this top, this top breastplate is where 
where it really comes in, I think so. We'll go a little bit harder to this top section. So we got that, and then we'll just do back again to the the, the, the more generic chrome and gold mix to to do like the the lines instead of the armor. So just round here. Again, then that's the uh, the gem. So you worry about that. How are we doing? We're like an hour and a half in, and we're nearing like an end point for the the armor for sure, which is nice. I'm gonna do this this top line for the comet. I like the silver. So we are towards the end point of the armor now, or well, towards the end point of uh, the gold armor, at least I should say. We're looking there. That's good. Uh, we're going to do just the uh, the crown sort of section here. lines onto it. Okay, that's good. And then we can do around to the other side. Then we'll work away um up and down both uh, both the arms and the pauldrons that'll be the the last section to look at for that so let's do a bit of we've done it already on the, uh, the comet And yeah, we're back onto the uh, the arms. It's gonna be less than I think quite quickly. Fair, we're gonna just put like a little bit of on top of the hand. Some raised areas here. The guard. And uh, some metal. Or metal. When I say metal, this is all <laughs> um, steel. That's what I meant. This is all metal. Obviously, this is all metal. I'm painting the. section of the wardrobe. Okay. Okay. 
at his nose. Do it from this angle, so it's never better for you. A little worse for me. Can live with it. This silver coloration onto the this is shoulder pad. It's not quite showing enough for me right now. So quite a lot of raised areas, quite a lot of detail to work with to, to get it. It's just about doing it and replicating it on the other side. That's the last. Let's do just a bit more of the chrome itself. Just that th thin line. This is where it where it ends basically. So rather than doing the mix, we're doing just the chrome. Here. But hopefully, that's made enough of a difference to go. That's a nice pale, pale gold. Took that like very top highlight of chrome. So like pure chrome across the year. Uh, the highest of the raised areas. So what we're doing across the, the kneecap again here, so just doing the, the very edge of the armour. So either the flat surfaces do pick it up, they're not uh, not what we're aiming for. It's all about the, the lines instead. No, yeah, not a not a great deal more to do then on the armor wise. Which is a, a nice spot to be in. So a uh, good bit of work tonight. So it's like what? Half eleven. So I think we're going to finish off the armor. And come back tomorrow night to get some uh, more work on these other sections. It's top uh, It's like pure, pure chrome, likewise here. I think I'm just going to do a little bit tippy 
up shit. Pauldron. That's what these cross cross sections on the sword. the crown when you go and overwork in this uh, section. Just, just like feather it. Feather it so here we go. So after what we started like what? Uh, Nearly 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, near enough, so we had an hour and a half, and this is where where we've got to, so. Might brush out of the way in there, the paper towel helps. So this is uh, this is in Straza, so far. So we've got a, a good, good way of going. Like I'm pretty happy with how the metals are looking. Like that, that slight uh, silver sheen to the the most highlighted areas. Yeah, uh, I think it works across the top of maybe maybe this uh, the abs need a little tiny bit of something. So that's what we're having. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> right. All this effort just to do Stormcast abs. As you do. Good. Right, so um, like I said, there's a little bit left to do, but I'm I'm much happier with like this this layer, this level of silver, like or chrome, I should say, on top of the um, the pure gold. I think it works nicely. Um, we've got a little bit more to do um, to finish off. So the gold's pretty much there. Um, the the steel, um, I basically want to just like uh, wash it down and then highlight it back up. So let's do that. Let's do that before we call it night. I think it's time to do so. So, so let it be done. So we're doing just a bit of null oil. Nice. Nice bit of another aisle to finish off this. Uh, to darken down what we're looking at is the. Uh, this, uh, palette. Done with that. Uh, darkening down the uh, the steel areas. Um, so not too many of them, but we've got. Uh, we'll see this uh, section here of the. So there because we went too deep. Um yeah, so the scale mail here needs to get some uh, some more on it. 
Open the door. So obviously you want to try and make sure we're not uh, spreading out to so we don't want to. Bottom comet tails. Here, underneath the arm, going okay, with the scale mail continues. And onto the bottom section of the spear. Nice and simple up the blade. Just pick that all up. Just really darkens the blade down, if you can see. Um, so we do this uh, the, the rod section, effectively. Uh, we've got this section here of the arm pieces, and then we'll do spin around. She's got a similar, similar section on the back. Essentially, it's like the back of the uh, the elbows. Uh, oh, and uh, on the top of this comet, so just really get that on there. Sword, or rather the sword blade, I should say. Nice and smooth. On it goes. Spin it around. And there we go. So that needs to, to dry before I'm. Uh, Adding anything extra to it, um, some uh, some good progress in life. So it's going to take a little while. So there's a uh, I can pick up the next section, I guess. I can have the robes and stuff to start doing now. But it's coming up towards twelve o'clock here, so I think I think we're going to call it for the night. Um, and then still the weekend, so uh, tomorrow night uh, we should be uh, doing a little bit more. So I'm just gonna leave my stuff to the side. Um, I'll call this call this part one. So here is the the level we've got to. Like I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty cool. Um, obviously, there's the top of the spear there, but the main detail is looking at the the transitions really of, of the colours between the uh, like the full-on gold, then the darkening wash, then the highlights, then the second highlight, then the third highlight, maybe <laughs> and the three highlights, maybe. But I think it works. I think it. I think it really brings it out. Um, in comparison, here's like a different model, but we're we're looking at more like goldy gold. And you can kind of see where where we haven't done the blending on the one, which is just like a it is just gold at the moment. Um, but uh, that's for a different game though, and a different night. But yeah, for now I'm quite happy with that. Uh, yeah, I like the uh, that transition looks pretty cool. Uh, I think the 
the dark areas look good, the light areas look good. So, yeah. So there we are. That is uh, the the armor. So this this last section now is literally to, to finish off the the metallics. Essentially, is just like the highlight of um, chrome onto the, um, the steel. Um, so that's literally going to be a this rash brush. Um, I'm not going to take a great deal of time, but obviously we need to wait for it to dry first. Otherwise, it'll be a mess. I don't want to undo my good work. So, if you've enjoyed watching it, okay, you can uh, you know, give us a thumbs up, a like, a follow, feed the social media gods, however, whatever place you're watching me. And uh, yeah, leave a comment and stuff. Let me know what you're painting, what you're playing. Um, I'm just getting back into HTC well, and yeah, the, the sculpts are fantastic, so I'm super happy to be doing them. Um, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow night. Maybe to finish her off. We'll see, we'll see. If I can start a bit earlier tomorrow, then uh, then it maybe we just finish her off in one night, which would be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so thanks for joining me. And this has been uh, Kesbon Gaming. We've been painting the Instrada, the Huntress of, uh, of Sigma. Good night.